name is Mark Ellis from Stick and Rotor Studios and in this tutorial I would like to show you how to install X keypad for X keys um, and also what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about how do you initially set up your X key device and how to move some of the samples uh, into the appropriate directories in, in X plane 11. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, download X keypad and um, the most common place to get it from is directly from the overview page of XKeypad, which I've got up here um, in, um, in the browser. And you just scroll down and you should see a download link here. So just press this. And what it should do is bring the zip archive down to your downloads folder. And you can see that it's done. And then if we simply come over here and look in Windows Explorer, you'll see that we've got this archive here. Now, um, what you want to do is just unzip this. I happen to uh, like 7-Zip. It's one of my favorite uh, zip utilities. And I'm just going to say um, extract it here. And what it should do is give us an X keypad folder. And all you have to do is copy that and then you come over to wherever you've got X-Plane 11. Go to the X-Plane 11 resources folder, plugins folder, this is where all your other plugins are, and you simply want to say paste. Okay, so now we've got XKeypad um, installed. Now the one other thing you're going to want to do, uh, assuming for a moment that you uh, bought a license uh, for XKeypad so that um, you know, you can run with more than uh, 31 key definitions on your X keys devices, you're going to want to install the license key. So again, if we go back to um, this page here, there is a place where you can register X keypad. Um, and remember, the binaries are the same, whether it's registered or unregistered. Uh, all you get with registered is when you uh, when you pay the $10, uh, you'll get an email with the license key. So here's where you would register. And once you've done that, uh, what you should get is an email from orders at stickandrotorstudios.com that thanks you for registering. And the license uh, file will actually be in an attachment up here. You can see it as license.txt. Um, and it's just a text file. And if we look at it right here, you can see that it's got kind of a rather long key with your email address you know, in it. And because it's such a long key, we don't want to have you have to type that in. So we just store it in a file. And all you have to do is save that file to your X keypad directory. So you just come up here, you right click on it. And again, this will be a little different depending upon what uh, email client you're using. I'm using Microsoft Outlook here. And we'll just do a save as. And again, you find your X-Plane 11 directory. You go to Resources, Plugins, X Keypad, and this is where you're going to want to put it. And just say Save. And make sure you don't change the name. It should say license.txt, um, and uh, that's the way X Keypad's going to look for it under that name. So if the name gets mangled uh, in some way, uh, it won't be able to find it. And you just say Save. And we are good to go from a standpoint of getting it installed. Now, we could go ahead and fire up um, X Plane right now, but the reality of it is uh, we've actually got to move some of the sample files over to where they need to be. So let's take a look at what's in your X keypad folder. Uh, in here you're going to have a couple of directories. There's a 32, a 64, um, and a win underbar x64. This is where the binaries are that when X plane uh, fires up, it's going to look here to actually load the plugin. You have a user's guide um, that you might want to uh, check out and also an end user license agreement. Um, the key thing you're going to want to look at now is in the samples folders. And we've got samples for the XK60 and the XK80. The XK80 is the one that's got the most uh, samples in. I think uh, for the XK60, I just did the, the Baron 58 as an example. But I, my expectation is most people will probably want to buy the XK80 because um, it really gives you a lot of the extra keys. So if we look in this folder, um, you'll see in here that we've got uh, folders for the different aircraft. This is the default 737, the default uh, you know, Baron 58, the C90, um, the C172, both variants. 
Uh, I've also got an example for the DDEN Challenger 300 and the Aerobasque uh, Diamond 62 and then the default SF50. And, and we're going to look at these in just a couple of minutes. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you want to use these uh, samples directly, then you kind of have to use the key layout that I did. And uh, what I think I'll do right here is I'll just bring this, this file up for you so you can take a look at um, what it looks like. Okay, so this is the layout um, that I did for my XK80. And, and again, you can change it if you wish, um, but if you use this one, then the samples will just work right out of the box. And that's kind of what I'm going to show you how to do, is how to make it work with these samples. Um, so this is the layout I used. And to print the legends out, uh, I got two flavors. There's uh, uh, legends that are... Uh, I think on basically a white background. And I'll bring this over and show it to you in Microsoft Word. And um, what I did with this is you can print it out on a on a translucent vellum paper. I used a, got a pack of it from Staples. Uh, and what's nice about the vellum paper is it's translucent, so the backlighting will show through it, and it'll actually disperse the backlighting a little bit. But because it's black lettering, uh, you can see it pretty nicely during the during the daytime. So the vellum, I think, is a really a really great option. Just make sure you get vellum paper that will print on the type of printer you've got. Um, I printed mine on a laser printer, and they came out really fantastic. Um, you know, if you don't have a laser printer, you could probably just bring this file into Staples along with the uh, you know a couple of sheets of the vellum paper and just ask them to print it. They'll do it for you for a couple of bucks. Uh, another option is uh, I have a dark layout for the keys. And this is one that I did on a uh, on a transparency. So it's basically a black background with white lettering. And when you print this on a transparency, the lettering will actually come through clear. Um, and you're actually going to see in the in my XK80 videos, that's the what I used for that. And that works really good too. They're they're both really great options. Um, and uh, I think what you got to do is experiment with a little bit and figure out which one do you like do you like the best. Um, you can also just print this on plain paper, um, you know, the one with the the light background, the dark lettering, and just put the paper underneath the uh, keycaps. But the one disadvantage is uh, plain paper is not translucent, so you can kind of still see the backlighting around the edge of the key, but it doesn't show through as nicely as it does with these. So uh, you know what you're going to want to do if you want to use these right out of the shoot. Just print these legends out, um, lay it out the way I did, okay, in uh, for the samples, and then you can just use this directly, okay? Um, just so we can see a, a contrast, if we come over and take a look at the XK60, um, you'll see that uh, I have a slightly different uh, layout uh, for that one because you have less keys. And let's just open this with photo. So that's the one I did for the XK60. So if you have an XK60, if that's what you bought, you can use this one for the Baron 58. Um, and then my guess is what you could do is you could look at the the XK80 samples and just, you know, copy the, um, you won't be able to copy the keys directly because you'll they'll, they'll be numbered differently. But you could look at how those samples are done um, and adapt it, recognizing, of course, with the XK60, you've got a lot, you have 20 less keys to deal with. So uh, you won't be able to fit quite as much on it as you can with an XK80. Okay, so let's go back over to uh, the samples. We'll get to the XK80 folders, and let's take a look at one. Um, I'm going to show you how to set up, let's say as an example, just the 172 to, to begin with. Or actually, I think the Baron 58 might actually be a better one to do as an example. So in here, there are a couple of files. Um, the two key ones are the CSV file and the Lewis script. Not all of the samples have a Lewis script. Um, I did something unique with the Baron 58 uh, around the cowl uh, switches where I wanted to be able to have the, rather than having the cowls purely fully open or purely fully closed, I did some uh, rather unique stuff in the Lewis script to allow you to have it incrementally open it at, uh, you know, 20% increments. Not all the samples are going to have a Lewis script. As an example, if we go back and we look at the Cessna 172, it doesn't have any any Lua files, okay? Um, so let's go back over to the Baron 58. 
The CSV is really what X keypad is going to read, and that's simply a text file. It's a comma delimited file um, that has all the definitions in it. Um, you can edit these with uh, with Microsoft um, Excel. Uh, you could also edit it with Google Sheets and number and a number of other different tools. Um, I tend to use uh, Excel, and Excel can actually save this in a different format, which is an XLSX format. And what's nice about that is you can keep all your formatting. You can even do things like color code the rows and the columns, um, add notes and all kinds of other crazy things in there. But um, when you get done with it, you still got to do a save as to save it as a CSV because that's what X keypad's going to want to read. So I've always maintained both flavors. I kind of use this as my master, uh, you know, where I can I can make it look a little bit nicer and and, and keep some extra formatting in it that I, that I sometimes want. But the CSV is ultimately what you want. So in order to get the Baron 58 set up, the first thing we're going to want to do is copy the CSV over to the Baron 58 aircraft uh, folder. And you'll notice the name the name of the file. It starts off as X keys under bar, and then it's got the same name as the ACF file for the aircraft. And this is how X keypad knows which one to load. When the plane gets loaded up in X plane, uh, X keypad can take a look at what the plane ID is, and it's going to basically get this name here, Baron under bar 58, from uh, from the X keypad SDK util or the X plane SDK utilities, and then it makes this name up and tries to find this file in the aircraft folder. So we're just going to copy it, and then we're going to come over to X-Plane 11, Aircraft, Laminar Research, Baron 58. And notice I said how the names were made up. If you take a look at the ACF, it follows the same convention as the aircraft definition file, Baron under bar 58. And all we need to do is paste that in there like that. Okay, and then if we go back over to the Baron 58 thing. If it's got a Lewis script, you're going to want to put this in the Fly with Lewis scripts directory. So we'll copy it. Go back over to X Plane 11 Resources Plugins. Find the Fly with Lua plugin, which, by the way, you don't get that by default in X Plane. You have to go download it. The manual will tell you to do that. And again, not all of the planes need Lewis scripts. But a lot of them I did uh, do Lewis scripts as sort of an example to show you some of the advanced stuff you can do um, if you use Fly with Lua. So we're going to come over here to the scripts directory. And you can see I already got it in here, but I would just paste it again, right, to make sure that you've got it over there. So now we're kind of ready to rock and roll and uh, bring up um, X-Plane and see if it all works. So let's fire up X-Plane now. And we'll pick the Baron 58. Where is that baby? Here she is. Make sure that the engines are not starting. Pick your airport. And let's fire it up. And if everything uh, worked properly, you should see that your XK80 lit up. Um, the way it should come up is with the uh, numeric keypad keys all in red. Um, and then you may find a couple of other of the keys in, in red, like the common monitoring is on, the brake is on. Um, but you should see it light up. Um, the other thing to make sure that X keypad's loaded, obviously it is if you see your XK80 light up like this. But you can also come up to the plugins menu. You should see X keypad in here. Um, you should be able to do things like an about to see what version you've got. Make sure it says registered in here, which indicates that your license key is installed. Uh, if for some reason or another you didn't install the license key properly, this will come up and show unregistered. And what you'll notice is that you'll only see the first 32 keys over here lit up because the unregistered version um, only lets you program, uh, you know, the, you know, 32, the first 32 keys on uh, on any device. Okay. You can also come up and change a few settings here, okay? With X keypad, you have the choice of, uh, you know, what color you want the background for the little numerica window, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, as a matter of fact, I think if we just start typing here, 
we should see the window show up and you can move it. So here we've got a uh, black on, uh, you know, white lettering on a black background here. You can change that to whatever colors you want. Um, you can also change the blink speed. Uh, let's see if I can get something blinking here if I turn on the transponder. Well, first, let me turn the battery on. Battery on. Avionics on. Transponder standby. Transponder ident. And if we get that blinking, we should be able to change the blink speed. I can make it faster, or I can make it quite a bit slower. You can also change the brightness of the backlighting. Okay, and you can turn off whether you want that numeric speech or uh, in a, a command speech uh, on or off. You know, as an example, when I uh, set the transponder, transponder on mode A. If I shut those off. I shouldn't get the, the speech anymore. Turn it on. Transponder on mode A. Okay. So I think that gives you a sense of, uh, of how you do things. You can change anything you want, uh, you know, over here. Just do a save. And now you should be in pretty good shape, right? Um, so that's how you install uh, X keypad. Or, and, I, and I think, again, to get the other planes set up, just go through that copy procedure of going to each of the sample folders, move the CSV uh, over to the appropriate aircraft folder. And if there is a Lua script, move that over to, um, you know, to the Fly with Lua scripts directory, and it should all work. Okay. Oh, and if, by the way, um, you don't have to shut down X-Plane every time. If you move those scripts over, all you have to do is come up here, uh, go to X keypad and say reload configuration files. Um, and what's nice about that is if you're actually editing and changing the configuration files, all you have to do is resave the CSV, uh, come up here and say reload it. Um, and that will allow you to kind of experiment with things and make some changes and immediately see what the impact's going to be without having to shut down uh, X-Plane and start all over again. So that's how you get it installed. I highly recommend that uh, you take a look at the tutorial video that shows you how to do uh, your configurations and adjust the configurations. My guess is most people are going to want to use a different layout than the one that I did. Um, but you know, it's, it's probably worthwhile to start with the one I did just so you get familiar with it and you have an understanding of how it works um, and get, uh, get comfortable with it. And then by all means, uh, you know, redo your own legends uh, and do your own configurations and have a lot of fun with it. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you have a great day.